Good morning and welcome to this introduction video for this morning's live stream Sunday morning worship service here at the Snyder Avenue Congregation Church, also known as Sac Philly. I'm Pastor David Grange and I'm so glad that you are with us this morning. This recording is for Sunday morning, November 29th, 2020. Indeed, we are glad to be able to come to you again via this pre-recorded video introduction along with our Sunday morning live stream on the Sac Philly YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Well, how was your Thanksgiving celebration? You know, 2020 has been a hard year for so many. Some have suffered more than others. Despite it all, I hope you were able to find real reasons for Thanksgiving. It's easy to focus on the bad, to forget that God has done one wonderful, wondrous deeds in our lives, even in 2020. Last week, we did not meet in person. Instead, the service was live streamed. It was the first time we conducted the service exclusively as a live stream. We're looking to continue to improve the quality. And again, thank you for attending online. We, we look forward to meeting again in person soon, but we're just not sure when that will happen. In the meantime, we want everyone to be safe. And we are relying on the guidance of the authorities before we return to in-person large gatherings. And we'll be sure to let you know as soon as that is possible. What is a dream church? This week, again, I will be preaching on that topic. What is a dream church? Acts chapter 2, verse 42 is our springboard where we find the marks of a dream church. It says, they, the new early church, the first church, as it were, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. You know, we're holding our church, the Snyder Avenue Congregational Church, up to the first century early church and seeing how we compare. No, there, there will never be another church like that first early church. What with their apostolic dream team of leaders, the, the very present active work of the Holy Spirit doing wonders and miracles, and, and the buzz of Jesus' resurrection going all around Jerusalem. But, you know, these factors, though to a lesser degree, are still present here today. Jesus is here with us through his Holy Spirit. As we exalt him, as the Holy Spirit leads, we too can expect his presence. We can too expect God to do great things through us. So what is a dream church? What makes a dream church a dream church? You know, they taught. They taught the eternal, truthful word of God. They practiced fellowship or koinonia. This happens when the church comes together and shares and enjoys the blessings of God with each other in countless ways. Last time we saw that a dream church is a praying church. A church that prays is, first of all, doing the work of the Lord and then knows what that work is, namely the preaching of the gospel and the making of disciples, and is prepared when opposition comes, like it did with the food distribution in Acts chapter 6, to continue that work. This week we focus on prayer again. A dream church is a praying church. From Acts chapter 4, we see this. Again, we focus on the result of prayer. After Peter and John, here in Acts chapter 4, get roughed up by the rulers and elders and scribes, it says, as they were gathering, as they were in Jerusalem, we see boldness, incredible boldness, in the face of persecution and the very real threat of death. Yes. How, how was it? How were they still so bold? Oh, it's no accident. It was the fruit of their ministry. And what was their ministry? Prayer. Prayer was what they did. And the ministry of the word, too. We see that in Acts chapter 6. Now we see the result of their consistent habitual prayer life in their amazing boldness before these Jewish leaders. Acts chapter 4, verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. I love that last line. They recognized that they had been with Jesus. And now through prayer, Jesus was with them. They no doubt remembered his last words. The words that we call the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. Where he says, go, make disciples. Go into all the world. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 28. You know, but this boldness, it turns out, it was contagious. It was, it was present among the whole new church, not just the apostles. 
Because after their release in chapter 4, they go back to the church, the gathered church there, who were praying. Who Then, after news of their release, give thanks, say praise God. And then Luke says, here at the very end of chapter 4, he gives us important detail. He says, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. I believe the church needs boldness today. You know, it's, it's not easy to be a bold Christian speaking the word of God. And it's alarming how, you know, in my short life, the good news we preach, which is, of course, our, our first duty of our mission, the first duty of our mission, to preach the gospel, that death to life, sinful, sinner reconciling to God, new birth-giving message is considered either irrelevant by the world at best or is at worst considered divisive and hurtful. Of course, nothing new here. The gospel, when it is preached in its fullest, most countercultural way, will offend. So what do we do? Do we cower and become silent? I'm afraid many Christians are doing just that. Or do we boldly proclaim the truth to the world that so desperately needs to hear Jesus' words of forgiveness and eternal life? I think we could all use a little more boldness. But how do we get it? Well, the answer is by the Holy Spirit through prayer. Again, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were had, had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. This morning's sermon message is entitled Your Dream Church, The Effect of Prayer. The morning's text is chapter 4, verses, Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 31. My message will be preached and recorded on Sunday morning at the church. There will be no one attended except myself and a small support team. But you can see the message live as in live stream. We will be live at 10.30 a.m. on the Sac Philly YouTube channel. Again, this Sunday, November 29th. If you are for some reason, unable to see it live, you can go to the Sac Philly website, sacphilly.org, or go to the Sac Philly YouTube channel to find this message after it is recorded. May the Lord bless you as you hear his word preached to your heart. By way of update regarding our building restoration campaign and the phase one fundraising effort, I've been sharing, you that we're sharing with you that we're well on our way to completing our phase one fundraising goal. We are still short about $1,600 as of this recording. We are trusting the rest of the money will come in by the project's completion. Now, the work should begin shortly, this week even, weather permitting, and concluding before winter sets in. Sac Food uh, Philly Food Pantry is open and will be open this first Saturday in December. Usually, it's not open the first Saturday, but Due to the Christmas holiday, when we won't be open, we decided to uh, open on the first Saturday. So again, this Saturday, the Sac Philly Food Pantry is open. Bring a mask and practice social distancing as you come. Again, Sac Philly is currently meeting online only, and we we see this probably through the end of the year. Uh, That may change. We'll be sure to let you know. In the meantime, stay connected. Send us your prayer requests, your praises, your greetings. And you can do that by calling the info line number, which is 267-388-0922. If you'd like to give to the the work of SAC Philly, the ministry of SAC Philly, we'd be so grateful if you did. You can send a check payable to SAC, 300 Snyder Avenue, Philadelphia, PA, 19148. You can also give through your mobile phone with the Cash app. Search SAC Philly, and you'll see Don Halverson's name. Also, you can give through our SAC Philly website, On the top there, you'll see the menu bar and click on give. You can choose to give either to the general fund. You can also give specifically to uh, Pastor Bagudikia. Or if you want to give to the building restoration fund, you can do so there as well. Thank you for supporting the work here at the Snyder Avenue Congregational Church. May God bless you for your kindness. And now we close with these words of benediction. You know, through it all, through 2020 here, we are stayed upon Christ Jesus. Our hearts are fully blessed, finding, as he promised, perfect peace and rest. So be blessed. See you next week. And now together we say, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us.